and then we'll take questions. Well, I guess that um, I can say wow. Uh, I think that our players deserve a tremendous amount of credit for the resiliency they showed in the game, the competitive spirit. Uh, they never gave up in the game. They kept fighting. Um, we didn't obviously play our best game, especially in the first half uh, in terms of execution. Um, but you can't fault the heart and the will to win that the guys played with. And I'm proud of every one of them. I'm very proud of, you know, Jalen, uh, who got an opportunity at the end of the game. And I told him this is your time. And he certainly, you know, took advantage of it. And Joss has played well for us all year long. Uh, but this was a great team win. And I think the other thing is, is people have to give Georgia a lot of credit. Uh, they really played us better than anybody's played us all year. Uh, you know, we played in a game here uh, where we won 32 to 28 when we played Notre Dame in a national championship game. And, you know, Georgia was the best team. You know, they, they, they were, they deserved to be uh, in the championship game. And uh, based on the teams that I've, we've played this year, um, I think this team deserves to be in the, the playoff as well. Uh, I sure as hell don't want to play them again. All right, but um, that's, that's the best compliment I can give you or give them. Uh, and their players did a fantastic job. They had a good plan. Um, and we had to make a lot of adjustments in the game. And I think our coaching staff did a good job as well. So uh, it's a great win. Winning the SEC is something that's really significant to me. Uh, means a lot to our players. Uh, this is a great league. Uh, has tremendous amount of prestige and great fans. And our fans were certainly uh, helpful and instrumental in uh, helping us get the momentum of the game late in the game. So uh, we certainly appreciate that. So great win. All right, thank you, Coach. If you have a question for Coach, for Jalen, for Josh, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Again, please give your name and affiliation. We'll start here in the front left. Coach Saban, Steve Moulton, 97-7 to zone out of Huntsville, only giving up one touchdown in the second half defensively. What adjustments were made at halftime, Coach? Well, they, they had formationed us in a couple things that um, confused our players a little bit. And sometimes when your players get confused, then they con they're confused on the things that they did practice. Uh, so I think we just needed to get everybody settled down uh, and making the right adjustments and – uh, I think we played a little better, you know, in the second half because of it. Uh, we still gave up a couple big plays, um, but they missed a field goal and only scored one touchdown, so that was really good. Um, uncharacteristic for us to drop as many balls as we did today, uh, throw interceptions like we did today. Um, but, you know, we kept fighting in the game and really proud for that. Okay, we'll go down right here. AP. AP Stedham, WATP, Foley, Alabama. Coach, what are some of the things you try to – tell your team at halftime, you know, not schematically or something, but just about some of the intangibles. And, and did you see that fourth down play on some of their film, you know, when they tried to go for it on fourth down? Did you see that in some of their film? Not that particular play, but they have faked a couple times. And we were screaming on the bench because the formation they were in, the second guy was eligible. So we were afraid we weren't going to get him covered up, but we did. Um, you know, we, we were in punch safe. All right, so we had the defense out on the field. And, um, you know, most of the time when you leave your defense out there, you can defend most of the fakes. And our guys did a good job. And um, it was a big play in the game because it gave us really good field position and allowed us to get out and score the winning touchdown. Okay, we're going to go straight in front of me, about halfway back. Uh, for all of you guys, um, what I think the before this, the closest margin of victory you had uh, in a game this season was by more than three touchdowns. Um, what does going through a game like this do for the team going forward? Coach, you want to start? Well, I always tell these guys, we don't look at the scoreboard. We're all trying to play our best, be our best, um, play the next play, um, be the best version of yourself. That's create what creates the most value for us. And um, so hopefully they play that way all the time. Uh, because the score really doesn't matter. When somebody looks at you and evaluates you as a player, uh, they don't put the scoreboard up to determine how you were playing. They just watch you play. So why should that matter, what the score is? Uh, now, I do think there's lessons to be learned in terms of, you know, technical aspects of clock management and some of the things that we had to do, you know, to get back in the game and, and to go down and win the game. Uh, but 
we've been in games like that before, and we've played in big games before. So uh, we got a lot of lessons to learn in this game, um, but a lot of them are just basic execution. And the message that I gave our players going into this game was, look, we have to focus on what's in front of us. All right, don't make the game too big. Don't worry about winning the championship. Worry about executing. Next block, next catch, next play, uh, and, and execute. And that's what we did not do very well in the first half. Jalen? Competitiveness of the game and being a tight game throughout. What coach said? <laughs> <laughs> Josh? <laughs> um, our goal as an offense is always <coughs> to score one point more than the opponent. Um, so we know we knew coming in that it was going to be a tough game. Uh, we knew throughout the week, so we grinded throughout the week to practice for that. Um, so basically, just preparation. All right, we're going to go back over on the right side along now. Greg Collier, your Action Sports of News. Jalen, tell me, what does it feel like for you to to be there and, and handle the situation that you did all year long, and then have this opportunity to come out? What does it feel like to be able to contribute? to this victory for you today? Um, well, you know, it kind of feels like I'm breaking my silence. You know, I haven't said anything um, all year, but, you know, this team has worked really hard in the off season, last spring, and, you know, we know what adversity looks like, and, you know, sometimes we may get hit in the mouth, but you know that we're going to respond, and I think we did a great job of, of finding a way to get it done today. I think we did a great job of doing that. Okay, we'll go back over here on this right side. Same area. AJ Spur, 90.7 WVUA FM Tuscaloosa. Josh, you've had a lot of great games this season that maybe flew under the radar. Tonight you were recognized as one of the greatest on the field. Do you feel as if tonight was your best game of the season? Um, no, definitely not. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's crazy because all of y'all think about the plays that I made, and the only thing I can think about is the plays that I didn't um, and the assignments that I missed. So. Um, each day, I try to improve on that. So coming tomorrow, I'm, that's the big thing I look at the most. OK, we'll go about midway back. Pat. Uh, for Nick, do you believe uh, Georgia is worthy of a playoff spot? Well, I commented on that before. Um, but uh, yes, I think one of them, based on what I've seen, they're one of the four best teams in the country. Um, so. And I also said I don't want to play them again, which is the ultimate compliment, I think, uh, that I could give them. Uh, the players play hard. They're well coached. They got a good system. Um, and look, we, got, we, we have a good football team. And um, th th they gave us a lot of problems out there today. And if, you, if that's any measure, uh, if you lose by seven points to the number one team, you shouldn't slip too far. All right, we'll go down right down in front. Again, your name and affiliation for your question. Dustin Holtbron, WRB on Columbus, Georgia. Coach, the young man next to you was just asked about himself, and he said he and the team, sort of indicative of all year. What does it say about him that he stuck with the program and then came through when the team needed him? I, I've probably never been more proud of a player than um, Jalen. Um, you know, it's unprecedented to have a guy that won as many games as he won, uh, I think 26 or something over a two-year period, start as a freshman, um, only lose a couple games this whole time that he was a starter. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he's not the quarterback. All right, and how do you manage that? How do you handle that? You've got to have a tremendous amount of character and class to put the team first, knowing that your situation is not what it used to be. Uh, and for a guy that's a great competitor, you know, that, that's, that's, that takes a lot. It's not easy to do. Um, and he's always put the team first. Uh, he's gone in the game whenever we've asked him to go in the game, and play, we played him uh, as much as we could so that if this came up, he was going to be ready. And uh, I think it worked out great. Uh, and I think this is a great example of why guys uh, don't need to run off and just transfer every chance they get or every time something doesn't work out. Jalen is going to be a more successful person in his life because of what he went through not winning 26 games, but when he went through this year, trying to be the kind of person who had to support other people after he was a star player. All right, we'll go over here to the right, alongside the aisle again. AJ Spur, 90.7 WVUA FM Tuscaloosa. Coach, in the first half, we saw Jalen come in, take a snap, and then on the very next play, swing out, I, I believe it was a slot, and he ran a route. 
if the situation wasn't the same in the second half, would we have seen more of that? I really don't understand your question. Um, the game plan with, with oh. Jalen swinging out as a receiver or even taking the occasional snap as he did one time in the first half. Would we have seen more of that in the second half? If well, it was in our plan to do that in the game um, because there were some plays that Jay we thought Jalen could run at quarterback because you know he does some things better than Tua. And um, so th we put them both in the game at the same time, so they don't know which one's going to end up being a quarterback. So that was a part of the plan. Uh, we just never got back to it or couldn't get back to it after Tua got hurt. Okay, we're going to stay on the right side over on the right wall. Uh, Coach Pat Duggins, Alabama Public Radio. How's Tua? Uh, Tua actually sprained his ankle in the first half, actually came back and played. Uh, the other injury, he got stepped on his foot, uh, which I don't think is significant. Uh, so we're going to evaluate his ankle tomorrow. Uh, but I don't think it should be something that would keep him out, maybe for a little while. But we probably won't practice for, you know, a couple weeks anyway. But we'll know more about that tomorrow. So we'll go back over here to the left, front row. Hey, Coach, Steve Moulton, 97.7 The Zone again. And uh, Josh said it was not his best game. Do you agree with him? Look, I, I don't ever criticize players in public. <laughs> I, and never to the press. You know, I, I think Josh has done a great job for us all year long. Uh, I would make a general statement, which I made to the team, uh, that I don't think we played our best game. And when it just comes to execution, doing the right things, making the right adjustments, not making a lot of mental errors. Um, and so there's a lot to be learned from that. Um, so, and I think we're going to try to use those lessons. And, and I like Josh's comment about I'm going to look at the things I need to do better. That, that's kind of what we need our players to do. You know, it's not always good when you play bad and win because uh, sometimes people aren't thinking I got to do something different. All right, so it speaks volumes when we win and our players still think they have to make improvements in things because uh, they recognize the fact that they could have played better. Okay, we'll go back here in the front row in the middle. Jalen, on the go-ahead touchdown, I wonder if you could just take us through us what was supposed to happen. Was it a run all the way? What, whatever its situation was, and then ultimately you got in the end zone. Um, well, I had an option to, um, you know, had had to find my movement key um, and, and see who would trigger the decision I make. And um, you know, my guy went out, so I took it in and um, had really good open lanes and found a way to get in the end zone. Okay, we have one final question in the back right. Thanks for Josh. What, do you think it was your running game that allowed y'all to hang around in that first half and then in the third quarter when y'all were a little behind? Just how effective was the ground game that allowed you to stay in it even when Tua was struggling in the pass game? Um, I think it was just <coughs> more of execution. Uh, we was executing our runs a little better today than we normally do. So. That's probably the biggest thing. The big run I had uh, s just sparked the uh, emotions of everybody. And um, it just allowed us to go on the run that we did. All right, Coach, Jalen, Josh, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Appreciate all the press does to reinforce a lot of positive things for these players. Thank you so much.